in part 4 of osteology i have explained about all the cranial bones and the facial bones this includes all the cranial cavities the various foramens in the base of the cranium and also the various structures that is passing through the uh, cranial foramens and uh, some of the applied anatomical aspect also let's start with the session now coming to the skull you know the skull there are eight cranial bones and 14 facial bones the facial bones forms the facial architecture the cranial bone forms the calvarium okay what is the difference between the cranial bone and the facial bone is any bone that is taking part to form a cranial cavity we call it as the cranial bones okay it may be projecting in the lateral aspect or um, uh, anterior aspect that is different but when you look inside the cranium any bone whichever is forming the whole cranial cavity okay we call that as cranial bones as such there are eight bones we will be discussing that individually and in fact the bones that is present in the anterior aspect of the face we call it as the facial bones okay so now if you look here if you look here uh, there are different uh, bones as I told you there is one frontal bone two parietal bones two temporal bone one occipital bone one sphenoid bone and one ethmoid bone and whereas in facial bone there is two nasal bone two maxilla bone two zygomatic bone one mandible two lacrimal bone two palatine bone inferior concha and Omer bones these are the facial bones so I would like to discuss each uh, facial I mean cranial bone separately so what you see here is the complete calvarium you, what you see here is the complete calvarium as I told you from looking from the external aspect looking from the external aspect this is the temporal bone and this is a frontal bone and this is the parietal bone this is a parietal bone and this is the occipital bone in the uh, frontal uh, posterior aspect this is the occipital bone and here you see this is a sphenoid bone and inside you have a small ethmoid bone okay so if you see why the ethmoid bone is present in the face why we call it as a cranial bone because if you look at the ethmoid bone here it is forming the small part it is taking part in the small part of the cranium that's why ethmoid bone is also called as the cranial bone okay so when you cut the bone when you cut the bone and see inside when you cut the cranial vault and see inside okay so what you see here is this part is the anterior cranial fossa this part is the anterior cranial fossa and this part is the middle cranial fossa and this part is the posterior cranial fossa this part is the posterior cranial fossa okay so uh, when you look at this fossas you know the brain is uh, present inside the cranial cavity okay in that the 80 percent of the brain is occupied by the cerebrum and remaining uh, part of the brain is occupied by cerebellum midbrain pons and medulla oblongata okay so coming to this place this you are seeing the cross section of the calvarium on the whole like this anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa okay now what we will do as i told you we will uh, discuss uh, all the bones individually one by one okay so let's take the frontal bone this frontal bone is two in number in the intraeternal life 
but uh, it get fused and forms one single bone it forms one single bone okay you know you if you look at this uh, uh, cranial bones you know these bones are very shallow in the intrauterine life and they are not allowing uh, the sutures are not formed during the time of birth it takes 2 years for formation of all this uh, fusion of all the sutures okay if you look at the sutures this is the coronal suture and this line is the sagittal suture this line is the sagittal suture and this is the temporal bone this is a temporal bone and uh, you have this <coughs> temporal suture here and this is the lambdoid suture what you see between the occipital bone and the parietal bones this is a lambdoid sutures okay so and this is the uh, squamous suture we can call it as temporal suture or the squamous sutures okay so these sutures if you look closely okay you see i try to hide okay if you look at the ends of this uh, sutures you see they come and lock to each other these bones are coming and locking to each other but in the intrauterine life or during the time of birth the sutures are not present they are very shallow they are very shallow and allowing the bones to collide each other during the time of birth allowing the bones to collide each other during the time of birth okay so coming to the frontal bones as i told you this is the uh, frontal bone and this is a coronal sutures this is a coronal suture <coughs> and this is the uh, joint between the frontal bone and the ethmoid bone this is a joint between the frontal bone and the ethmoid bone okay so uh, you know in the uh, frontal bone there is frontal sinus what is the frontal sinus this is a empty space okay that communicates to the nasal cavity so in order to show you that i have to make a cross section and show you then only you will be able to understand so what i'll do i'll make a cut here i will make a cut here through the frontal bone okay now i made a cut if you want to see the empty space okay you see this is the empty space in the frontal bone this is the empty space in the frontal bone this is called as a frontal sinus okay so uh, this sinus is i will remove the frontal bone and show you where it is reaching it is reaching the nasal cavity okay you see here it is reaching this nasal cavity this is the nasal cavity and this is the connection so what happen when you breathe in the air comes in and goes through here and circulates in this area and come back okay so if there is any fluid collection or infection we call it as sinusitis so you just press on the frontal bone you will know there is severe amount of tenderness okay that shows that is frontal sinusitis so this fr frontal sinus is present inside the frontal bone the empty space of the frontal bone okay so next this is what you have to understand about the frontal sinus okay then this is the joint between the zygomatic bone and the uh, facial bone okay so you can see this is the zygomatic zygomatic bone and this is the frontal bone and you know this cavity is the orbit the frontal bone is forming the upper part of the orbit the frontal bone is forming the upper part of the orbit okay this is the frontozygomatic suture then the <coughs> this is the nasal part and this is the orbital part okay the frontal bone is forming the upper part of the orbit okay then this is the spinofrontal sutures that is a connection between the spinoid bone and the frontal bone if you uh, look here okay 
this is a sphenoid bone and this is a frontal bone this line is called as the spino frontal sutures this line is called as the spino frontal sutures okay and these are the various parts okay and you know the frontal bone is forming the anterior cranial fossa in, inside the calvarium it is forming the anterior cranial fossa inside the calvarium okay so these are some of the this is an example of a flat bone well uh, you know in the newborn baby this hole is the there is a hole that is present here when you touch the head in this region or to one year or six months or seven months you can see a small pit okay that pit is nothing but the shallow bones of this uh, parietal and the frontal junction okay we call it as the anterior fontanel we call this pit as a anterior fontanel we can use this pit for uh, um, um, making ultrasound to see the intracranial structures okay but it fuses in two years this uh, uh, anterior fontanel will fuse okay so this is the normal growth process let's go to the parietal bone this parietal bone the prom this is also a flat bone this is also a flat bone okay this forms the this suture is a coronal suture this suture is a sagittal suture and this suture is the lambdoid suture and this is the occipital suture so this is a lambdoid suture and this is occipital, occipital sutures okay now if you see um, well uh, if you look at the parts okay, this is a body of the parietal bone okay and this is a coronal sutures that is present in the anterior side and this is the lambdoid sutures that is present in the posterior side now uh, between the occipital bone and the uh, um, um, parietal bone and this is the coronal suture sagittal suture or the medial sutures okay so this is a sagittal suture and this is the squamous suture okay that is present between the temporal bone and the uh, so this prominence is called as a parietal horn this prominence is called as parietal horn okay so these are various parts of the parietal bone okay next uh, next we will go to the occipital bone this occipital bone is quite interesting this occipital bone is quite interesting okay this occipital bone is present in the posterior aspect forming the posterior cranial fossa and in the external view you can see this line is the this line is a superior nuchal line and this line is the inferior nuchal line we will see the parts one by one okay and this is the okay okay this is the basilar part of the occipital bone this is the basilar part of the occipital bone and this is the lambdoid sutures and the occipital condyles okay this condyle is sitting on the atlas vertebra that is a c1 vertebra if you see here this one and this one okay you can see now this this is the occipital condyle this is occipital condyle this occipital condyle is sitting on the superior articulating facet of the atlas it's sitting on the superior articulating facet of the atlas this is a posterior view okay now okay now this is the occipital spino occipital sutures where the uh, sphenoid bone and the uh, occipital bone is uh, at, uh, articulating not articulating it is uh, forming the sutures okay then this hole the la largest foramen the base of the skull is foramen magnum okay so through this foramen magnum this uh, spinal cord is passing okay apart from the spinal cord you have the meninges okay if you look at i will remove this and i will remove this atlas bones 
some of these are weakly vertebra so if you look at the structures that is passing through this or uh, uh, this brain and this uh, I mean the spinal cord is coming out to the starting in the foramen magnum then the meninges okay these meninges are fibula matter arachnoid matter and pia matter that is covering the spinal cord that is covering the spinal cord okay these are the many apart from that the vertebral artery is also passing the vertebral artery okay so if you look in this place carefully yeah you see this is the vertebral artery this is the vertebral artery you can see this vertebral artery in the subosseptal triangle if you want to dissect the posterior triangle of the neck in the subosseptal triangle you have the rectus captus major and rectus captus minor muscle okay we call the sr no muscles okay this is the muscle and you can see this vertebral artery here okay so this is a bosseptal triangle so the vertebral artery is passing through the foramen magnum then you have the 11th cranial nerve the accessory nerve is also passing through this foramen magnum okay you see this is the accessory nerve right and the left accessory nerve it is also passing through the foramen magnum okay so these are the structures that is passing through the foramen magnum okay you see vertebral artery spinal cord accessory nerve and the meninges that is covering okay so let's go to the next part let's go to the next part okay now <coughs> then let's go to the hypoglossal canal okay this through this hypoglossal canal the hypoglossal nerve is passing that's a 12th cranial nerve that is the 12th cranial nerve i will remove these arteries okay and i will show you the 12th cranial nerve okay Hypoglossal vessels and the nerves are passing. <coughs> yes, here. This is the hypoglossal nerve okay so this is the hypoglossal canal okay so what you do is from the from the inner aspect this nerve enters and it is coming out in the anterior hole this is hypoglossal canal okay this is the hypoglossal canal okay so coming to the next part coming to the next part Coming to next part, <coughs> this hypoglossal canal, and then this is a large uh, important uh, foramen. This is called as a jugular foramen. So the jugular foramen is where is the place where the jugular vein is coming out. Okay. So this is the internal jugular vein. This is the internal jugular vein. Okay. You see, this is a. You can see a jugular bulb here. This is the place where the jugular bulb is present. I will try to isolate this. Okay. Okay. This is a occipital bone, and this is jugular foramen, and this is a jugular bulb. Okay. This is a jugular bulb. This is a sigmoid sinus. So the jugular bulb forms above the jugular foramen, and then. The jugular, mm, jugular foramen. I mean, jugular vein is exiting out. Okay. Apart from this jugular vein, the glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve, also 
passing through this foramen okay so for that i will show you okay we will look carefully so here this is a vagus nerve and this is a glossopharyngeal nerve okay this is a vagus nerve glossopharyngeal nerve into jugular vein vagus nerve and all the structures are passing through this jugular foramen all the structures are passing through this jugular foramen okay the base of the skull in the base of the skull so let's go to the next bone these are some of the parts of the occipital bone and you know this occipital bone is present in the posterior inferior aspect and this occipital bone is sitting on the cervical vertebra okay, the whole skull is sitting on the occipital bone okay this is what you have to understand about the occipital bone and these are all the nuchal line superior and inferior nuchal line where the uh, paraspinal muscles are attached to these bones to this uh, area okay so let's go to the next bone okay now we will go to the temporal bone temporal bone okay this temporal bone is very uh, special this temporal bone is very special and you know what <coughs> If you look at the parts clinically also this temporal bone is very important clinically also this temporal bone is very important okay so coming to this temporal bone this is the mastoid process mastoid part okay where there is presence of this bulge that is called as a mastoid process inside which you have the mastoid air cells okay and this is the occipital mastoid sutures that is a connection between the occipital bone and the mastoid bone and this is a connection between the parietal uh, and the mastoid process parietal mastoid suture and this is a petrous part okay this is a petrous part okay see you you had this mastoid part you had this petrous part okay and also this squamous part three parts of are there for the temporal bone okay one is the uh, squamous part petrous part and the temporal mastoid part okay you know what the inside petrous part only all the organ hearing apparatus is present we will discuss that okay so just know this mastoid part is present present in the uh, uh, posterior side okay and this is anterior view okay and you know this pro projection is called as a mastoid process this projection is called as a mastoid process where the sternocleidomastoid muscle is attached where the sternocleidomastoid muscle is attached okay and coming to the petrous part this is a petrous part and in the petrous part you have this internal acoustic meatus and this is the carotid canal so in the internal acoustic this is internal acoustic meatus okay so in the internal acoustic meatus you have this uh, <coughs> vestibulocochlear nerve that is passing in this internal acoustic meatus to see that i have to remo remove the bones in the surrounding area okay okay fine so if you look here this is a internal acoustic meatus okay if you look at the nerves that is passing through this okay this is a internal acoustic meatus here you have the vestibulocochlear nerve vestibulocochlear nerve and then the uh, intermediate nerve okay that is the facial nerve branch okay and also this facial nerve okay facial nerve and the vestibulocochlear nerve are passing through this uh, internal acoustic meatus okay this is the internal acoustic meatus and also you have the carotid canal you have the carotid canal okay so if you look at this place
Yes. Okay, you see this carotid canal is in carotid artery centering here and then it is coming by the side of the sphenoid bone. Okay, so this is the carotid canal. This is called the carotid foramen and uh, the carotid artery that is passing through this canal is called as the carotid canal that is present in the temporal bone that is present in the temporal bone that is present in the temporal bone okay so okay now if you look at this uh, uh, zygomatic process okay this part is called as a, this extension is called as zygomatic process and here in the anterior aspect of the face you have the zygomatic bone this zygomatic bone is uh, this is a zygomatic bone and this is articulating with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone okay it is articulating with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and you know this is a carotid canal the carotid artery passes through this and then it is coming out by the side of the uh, sphenoid bone ok next this hole is called as the external acoustic meatus this hole is called as the external acoustic meatus ok what is that this is external auditory canal in fact ok as I told you this complete uh, hearing organ that is the vestibulocochlear apparatus the malus incusans stapes bone all this are the middle ear internal ear and the external ear is present in the petrous part of the temporal bone okay it's present in the petrous part of the temporal bone and this is the uh, external view where the external auditory meatus is present okay then this is the internal auditory meatus uh, through which the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve and facial nerve is passing okay next the jugular foramen this is a uh, jugular foramen okay half of the jugular foramen is formed by this occipital bone and half of the uh, uh, jugular foramen is formed by this temporal bone okay and this is a mastoid foramen uh, this is a mastoid foramen where there is branches of this occipital artery and the emissary veins are coming out okay just by this adjacent side just by the adjacent side here the sigmoid sinus is passing so for that i will okay you see this is the if you look here carefully if you look at this junction carefully okay so this is the uh, uh, yeah this is a temporal bone and this is the sigmoid sinus this is a sigmoid sinus okay so in road traffic accident if there is fracture of this uh, temporal bone it can damage this uh, sigmoid sinus and the blood can leak through this and moreover the subarachnoid uh, space okay this uh, uh, subarachnoid space is passing through this so what happens fracture of this petrous part can puncture the arachnoid membrane and uh, so dural sac and the arachnoid membrane and the CSF can ooze can leak through this external auditory canal can leak through the external auditory canal okay so this you have to understand clinically because this this area of the bone is very thin this area of the bone is very thin and it can easily fracture and communicate to the subarachnoid space during the time of road traffic accidents during the time of road traffic accidents okay so these are all some of the parts of the and this is a spine this is called as a spinous process this is called as a spinous process so this uh, spinous process is nothing but it is giving attachment for the small neck muscles okay so if you look at the muscles of the neck you see all the small muscles this stylohyoid then this uh, stylopharyngeus 
mm, all these muscles are getting attached to the and also this silo glosses all these neck muscles are attached to this small spine like projection okay that's called as the spinous process that's called as the spinous process between this uh, uh, mastoid process and this spinous process the, between this mastoid process and the spinous process there is a small hole called as the stylomastoid foramen through which the facial nerve is coming out okay this is the facial nerve okay and this hole is called as the stylomastoid foramen through which the facial nerve is coming out okay so these are some of the parts of the these are some of the parts of the temporal bone these are some of the parts of the temporal bone let's go to the so we finished occipital we finished temporal we finished frontal and now we have to go to the spinoid bone the butterfly shaped bone if you see this is anterior view okay it uh, it's a body of the butterfly these are the wings of the butterfly this is the lateral view and this is the posterior view of the spinoid bone posterior view of the spinoid bone so for that now i will remove the other bone so that it will be easy to okay okay now you what you see is the temporal this is the temporal bone this is the temporal bone and this is a spinoid bone okay so this spinoid bone is forming the inferior anterior inferior part of the cranium okay of the skull and if you look at the parts of the spinoid bone this is the body of the spinoid this part is called as the body of the spinoid okay this is anterior view and this part is a body of the spinoid and this is a lesser wing less this is the lesser wing and this is the greater wing okay so i'll show you the uh, this is the lesser wing and this is the greater wing okay so this is the lesser wing and this part is the greater wing of the spinoid okay see lesser wing greater wing okay fine so let's go to the other process this is a pterygoid process that is extending inferiorly this is the pterygoid process that is extending uh, inferiorly and this part is called as cella tarsica okay if you look at the lateral side this is the cella tarsica okay it's also called as the pituitary fossa or hypophyseal fossa any name you can call okay cella tarsica pituitary fossa hypophyseal fossa this <coughs> cella tarsica is a small pit like structure okay and you know this projection this part this small uh, projection one two three four this four projection is called as clinoid process okay these two are the anterior clinoid process and these two are the posterior clinoid process okay so what happens here the diaphragmatic cella is attached the diaphragmatic cella is attached i will show you with this uh, the diaphragmatic cella so this is the uh, okay so now if you okay now this one okay you see what is the diaphragmatic cella you know these are all the dura mater these dura mater comes and condense in this place and this point is attached to the anterior clinoid process and this two point is attached to the posterior clinoid process this is a membrane like structure which gives a small hole through which the pituitary stalk is coming through which the pituitary stalk is Uh, this, this is a pituitary stalk and this is a pituitary gland the small uh, the peanut shaped gland this pituitary gland is coming and sitting on the cella tarsica okay this pituitary gland is sitting on the cella tarsica okay so okay so this is a cella tarsica and you know if there is pituitary gland calcification 
In the lateral view of uh, X-ray, this uh, cell tertia is clearly visible. Or if there is, if there is any pituitary adenoma, tumor of the pituitary gland, then it can lead to uh, growth of this pituitary, I mean uh, pituitary gland tumor, and there is encroachment of this tissue in the uh, glandular tissue in the cell tertia. Okay, so next. <laughs> this part is called as the sphenoidal rostrum this part is called as the sphenoidal ro rostrum and this is the place where the sphenoid bone is uh, bone is articulating with the palatine bone in the facial area okay then this is the sphenopetrosal suture and this is the sphenosquamal suture and this is a foramen ovale okay this part is called as the foramen ovale so if you look at this foramen ovale this foramen ovale is present in the uh, spinoid bone through which the mandibular nerve is passing through which the that's the part of the temporal bone okay so what i will do to show that i will This is a mandibular nerve. This is a mandibular nerve, and this is a foramen ovale. This is a foramen ovale. This is a foramen ovale. Okay, through which the uh, mandibular nerve, that is the part of the trigeminal nerve, is passing. Okay, that is the part of the trigeminal nerve is passing. Okay, so coming back here. Coming back here, I will remove this structures. Now let's go to the next foramen. This is the foramen rotundum. This is a foramen rotundum. This uh, foramen rotundum is present in the uh, inferior aspect. Okay, this is present in the inferior aspect. And if you, uh, this foramen rotundum is present in the uh, spinoidal bone, and uh, this foramen rotundum is giving i mean the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve is coming out through this foramen rotundum okay if you look at this uh, yeah, as i told you the trigeminal nerve has the ophthalmic division maxillary division and the mandibular division so the maxillary division that is coming out through this foramen rotundum okay then you have the foramen spinosum you have this foramen spinosum so these are the foramen spinosum so uh, in this also the middle meningeal artery is passing so for that i have to show you this artery so what i will do i will remove this bones you know this middle meningeal artery is clinically it's very important okay so in road traffic accidents this this artery is prone for damage yeah this is the middle meningeal artery this is a middle meningeal artery okay so this middle meningeal artery is a branch of external carotid artery so you, you see this is external carotid artery this is internal this is internal carotid artery so superficial temporal artery and this is the internal carotid artery okay so in this uh, uh, yeah this is the uh, maxillary artery in this maxillary artery this there is a branch this is called as the middle meningeal artery that is running in this foramen that is running in this foramen and it is passing between the meninges and the uh, skull bones so that when there is road traffic accident this artery is prone for rupture and causes the subdural hematoma so and causes the subdural hematoma okay so that's the importance of this uh, foramen that's the importance of this foramen okay and next okay 
now uh, we will go to the foramen spinosum okay through which the middle meningeal artery is passing then you have the optic canal this is a optic canal you can see this is a optic canal this is optic canal through which the optic nerve and the ophthalmic arteries are passing okay then this is a supraorbital fissure okay so this is the opening in the uh, uh, orbital part okay this part is called as the supraorbital fissure there also you have the uh, cranial nerves that is passing through it okay so these are some of the foramens in the spinoid bone these are some of the foramens and the parts of the spinoidal bone so don't forget the greater wing lesser wing body cella tarsica and various foramens in the spinoid bone okay then the last cranial bone is the ethmoid bone then the last cranial bone is the ethmoid bone so if you look at this ethmoid bone you know this ethmoid bone is forming a small part this is forming a small part in the cranium okay so you know this is the nasal part and you know this is the cranium uh, part which is forming the cranial cavity okay so if you see here this is the uh, there is perpendicular plate and the parallel plate so this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone which is extending as a nasal septum okay and this is the parallel plate this is the parallel plate so in this place you have the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone this part is called as the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone okay this part is called as the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and there is a small projection in the ethmoid bone this is called as the crista gallae to which the uh, meninges is attached if you look at the meninges the fox cerebri is attached okay this is a fold of the dura mater that's a fox cerebri this is attached to this this part is called as a crista gallae so this um, fox cerebri is attached to this crista gallae of the ethmoid bone okay so in this ethmoid bone if you see there are lots of uh, minute holes there are lots of minute holes i'll show you there are lots of minute bones main holes okay so through these holes the uh, olfactory nerve is piercing and this is the olfactory bulb and this is the uh, ethmoid cribriform plate of ethmoid bone if you see this closely if you observe this closely okay here you can see the branches of this uh, olfactory nerve is piercing this cribriform plate of ethmoid bone and it will it will spread in the nasal mucosa in the inner aspect of the nose so this nerve detects the sense of smell you can see this nerve is distributing to the nasal mucosa and this detects this an olfactory sense okay so these are the some of the importance of this ethmoid bone okay inside this ethmoid bone there is a sinus there is a sinus so what i will do i will cut through cut the skull through this ethmoid bone we call it as ethmoidal sinus okay so let me cut through the ethmoid bone okay, i removed the skull i removed the skull now if you see the okay so okay this is a frontal sinus and this is the nasal cavity yes now i cut the section of the ethmoid bone okay and this is the ethmoidal sinus okay this is the see there are frontal sinus and this is the uh, uh, yeah this is the spinoidal sinus and this is the ethmoidal sinus this is the nasal cavity in fact and this is the nasal cavity and this is ethmoidal sinus okay by the side and the adjacent aspect of the uh, nasal cavity uh, sorry in the ethmoid bone there is ethmoidal sinus and this is the spinoidal sinus that is present on the, in the spinoid bone so all these are the empty space okay for example this ethmoid sinus is connecting to this nasal cavity here 
then the frontal sinus is connecting to the nasal cavity here then the sphenoid sinus is connecting to the nasal cavity here these are the empty space where there is mucous membrane so what happens when you breathe in what of this air flushes into all this uh, empty sinus sinus spaces and gets humidified okay this sinus is also giving resonance for your voice okay it's also giving resonance for this voice so the sinus is nothing but the empty space through which the air is circulating when you during the breathing process so if there is any accumulation of fluid or infection in the sinus it gives severe amount of headache generally the uh, maxillary sinus this is a maxilla bone okay okay this is a maxillary sinus if there is accumulation of fluid in this or infection maxillary sinus the patient presents with posterior headache so patient think that there is some problem with the hospital lobe of the brain but that is uh, the sinus space is uh, i mean the maxillary sinus pain and uh, infection will reflect pain in the occipital part of the skull okay so that is the specialty just clear press this area and know whether there is any uh, tenderness to find out if there is any sinusitis okay so let's go to the next bone okay by this we are completing all the cranial bones by this we are completing all the cranial bones okay so just know the foramens okay uh, in the inferior aspect there are many foramens okay so coming here to the foramens from the uh, inner aspect of the skull you can see this is the optic foramen this is the supraorbital fissure and this is a supraorbital fissure from the anterior aspect of the skull and this is the foramen protandum this is a foramen ovale and this is foramen spinosum this is jugular foramen okay jugular foramen you have to see from underneath and this is a cribriform plate where there is minute holes through which the olfactory nerve branches are piercing okay then this is a foramen lacerum then this is a stylomastoid foramen under the base of the skull through the facial nerve is coming out and this is internal acoustic meatus through which the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve and facial nerve is passing and this external acoustic meatus is also called as external auditory canal then foramen magnum the largest foramen in the base of the skull and this is a hypoglossal canal through which the 12th cranial nerve is exiting out okay these are some of the foramens in the base of the skull these are some of the foramens in the base of the skull so by this we are completing the skull by this we are completing the skull and this skull uh, cranial bones forms the uh, these cranial bones are forming the cranial cavity okay these cranial bones are forming the cranial cavity so uh, these are the names that you have to uh, understand and this is how the uh, cranium uh, cavity is formed the calvarium is formed by these bones okay so next let's go to the facial bones as i told you there are 14 facial bones there are 14 facial bones okay. So we have discussed all these bones and the canals. Okay. And here this is the place where the sphenoidal sinus is present. And here you have the cumoidal sinus. Okay. Okay, there are 14 facial bones in the two nasal bones, two lacrimal bones two inferior nasal concha, two maxilla and one mandible, two palatine bone, two zygomatic bone and one warmer bones. This is what we are going to see now. Okay. So now what we will do is uh, we will go according to the uh, okay. 
we will start the facial bones from the mandible using our model okay the mandible is the lower jaw the mandible is the lower jaw and the maxilla is the upper jaw okay if you look at the uh, facial bones here if you look at the facial bones here okay so the facial architecture is uh, created by the facial bones okay so uh, there are many differences between the male facial bone and the female facial bones okay the lower jaw bone is called as the mandible the lower jaw bone is called as the mandible okay if you see here the parts of the mandible this is the alveolar process where the gomphosis joint is present what is gomphosis gomphosis is a like a peg in the hole so just the tooths are inserted in this alveolar process okay that's what we call this gomphosis joint okay and this part is called as a body of the mandible body of the mandible and this is the coronoid process okay also called as a head of the mandible we can uh, so this is the mandible condyles okay this is the mandible condyles so it's also called a head of the mandible this condyle is articulating with the uh, mandibular fossa of the temporal bone okay you see this is a temporal bone and this is a mandible bone this is a head of the mandible we can see a pit here on the temporal bone you can see a pit this pit is called as a mandibular fossa okay so the head of the mandible articulates here to form the temporomandibular joint okay this is the temp in place where the temporomandibular joint is present there are sometimes there are rare chances of dislocation of this temporomandibular joint there is rare chances of dislocation of this temporomandibular joint okay so now if you see here the parts of the mandible this is a head okay it's also called as a condyle of the mandible and uh, this is the uh, coronoid process this is called as the coronoid process which gives a muscle attachment that is the temporal temporalis muscle then this is the neck of the mandible this is a head and this is a neck okay and this is a mandibular foramen through which the uh, inferior alveolar nerve and blood vessels are passing and this is a mental foramen through which the, this is a mental foramen through which the uh, mandibular divisions of the trigeminal nerve is coming out okay so if you see in this place this uh, teeth we will discuss separately in the digestive system because uh, we have to discuss uh, the histological aspect also let's not include the teeth in the uh, skeletal system but i will tell you the name these are there are incisors then this is the uh, lateral incisors and this is a canine tooth these two are the premolar tooth okay then uh, this is the molar tooth there are two molar tooth okay and this is the third molar so this is the main molar tooths are the main place where the uh, breaking of the food is taking place okay we will see the histology part uh, of the teeth in a separate topic i don't want to go deep into the uh, uh, tooth okay so coming here this is the mandible so uh, you know the parts the head neck corona, uh, uh, coronoid process and this is the ramus of the mandible this is the ramus of the mandible and this is the angle of the mandible this is the angle of the mandible if you look at the muscle attachment in the mandible uh, you know what this okay this part is the insertion for the masseter and this is the part where the deep master muscle is inserted and this is the origin point of the uh, depressor angle ovaries and this is the origin point of the 
mentalis muscle and here you have the insertion point of the this is insertion point of the platysma muscle the platysma is a flat muscle in the neck you can see here okay see how flat it is okay but it is inserting here okay so the contraction of platysma will make the jaw to open will make the jaw to open so this is a masseter muscle that these muscles we have discussed already in the facial uh, muscles okay so let's not deviate the topic okay okay next we will go to the next bone this the maxilla bone okay the maxilla that is right maxilla and the left maxilla this maxilla is forming the uh, upper jaw okay this maxilla is forming the upper jaw you have the right and the left maxilla so coming to the parts of the maxilla you know this is the alveolar process where the tooth is inserted this is also a comb forces that is the peg in the joint peg in the whole uh, type of joint okay and this part is the body of the maxilla and this is a frontal process and this is the intermaxillary suture between the right maxilla and uh, left maxilla this suture is giving the attachment okay and this is a palatine process so you know in the uh, when you open the mouth this is a palate bone okay, this is a palate bone and this is extending as a soft palate here this is a hard palate so the uh, cleft palate is common i mean the, the fusion defect is common in some a newborn baby as a congenital anomaly and this is a palato maxillary suture okay this is a palato maxillary sutures and this is a zygomatic process where the zygomatic bone is attached and this is a zygomatico maxillary sutures and the infraorbital foramen through this infraorbital foramen it transmits the uh, infraorbital nerve and artery okay so uh it, that nerve is a branch of this uh, uh, max i mean maxillary part of the trigeminal nerve you can see here okay okay see this is a maxillary part of the trigeminal nerve this is the ophthalmic part and this is the mandibular part so this is a Uh, intraorbital part of the uh, maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve so, so if you see these are various parts of the maxilla and you know the maxilla is forming the part of the nasal cavity and also the orbit okay ophthalmic cavity optic cavity okay and also the optic cavity so coming here Uh, if you look this maxilla i'll re remove this maxilla and let's go to the zygomatic bone let's go to the zygomatic bone as i told you there is maxillary sinus okay uh, this is very important so if you see this is the maxillary sinus this is empty space present inside the maxilla bone okay that is communicating to the nasal cavity and thereby the air enters the maxillary sinus circulates here and goes back during the time of inspiration and expiration during the time of inspiration and expiration okay so during the time of inspiration and expiration so and this is the zygomatic bone the uh, front arch of the face is formed by this zygomatic bone the front half uh, arch of the face is formed by the zygomatic bone and this is the body of the zygomatic bone and this is a frontal pro frontal zygomatic sutures this is a maxillary process and this is a temporal process and temporal zygomatic sutures and this zygomatico maxillary suture and this zygomatico maxillary suture okay so this is a zygomatic process i mean uh, zygomatic bone 
and you can see in the face you feel a prominence in the lateral aspect of the face this prominence is formed by this zygomatic bone this prominence is formed by this zygomatic bone okay so let's uh, remove that okay now if you see uh, this are the concha bone see when you look at this uh, concha uh, inside the nasal cavity inside the nasal cavity okay mm. okay so this is a nasal cavity i will remove this okay if you see this fold you have to observe this fold inside the nasal cavity you need to observe this fold inside the nasal cavity so you know this there is one fold okay there is one fold there is two fold and there is third one okay so what is this fold why these folds are present in the nasal cavity okay these folds are called as the superior nasal concha middle nasal concha and the inferior nasal concha so these conchas are nothing but the fold inside the nasal cavity they are increasing the mucosal surface inside the nasal cavity okay so they are increasing the surface in the nasal cavity so what happens here when the nasal mucosal surface is increased when you breathe in the air gets humidified and it traps the dust so there are many functions for this concha bone okay it reduces the temperature of the breathing air likewise there are many functions for this concha so this concha is formed by the superior middle and inferior nasal concha so this is the inferior concha bone okay this is inferior nasal concha and this fold is the superior nasal concha that's a part of the ethmoid bone okay that's a part of ethmoid bone so i will remove the inferior nasal concha bone okay next you have the <coughs> this is a lacrimal bone this is a lacrimal bone this lacrimal bone is forming in the roof of the nose nasal cavity and it is present this lacrimal bone is also forming a small part in the uh, optic cavity okay so but the lacrimal gland is present in this area like this see the lacrimal gland is present in this superior aspect of the i mean in the lacrimal fossa of the frontal bone whereas the lacrimal bone is present in the medial aspect of the optic cavity okay so uh, there is something called naso lacrimal duct there is something called as the naso lacrimal duct okay this is the superior punctum and this is the in inferior punctum this is called as the La superior lacrimal canaliculi and the inferior lacrimal canaliculi and this is called as the bulb okay so this uh, nasal lacrimal duct is present adjacent to this lacrimal bone is present adjacent to the lacrimal bone and finally this duct is opening into the nasal cavity okay so when you install some medications in the eyeball you feel that taste in the nasal cavity because this medicine eye drops passes through the nasal lacrimal duct and it uh, comes to the sound okay come to the nasal cavity so that's the importance of this lacrimal bone that's the importance of this lacrimal bone so i will hide this lacrimal bone next you have this uh, this is the warmer bone this is a single bone that is present between the right and the left nasal cavity okay it is acting as a septum the wall between the right nasal cavity and the left nasal cavity this is left nasal cavity and this is right nasal cavity in the middle it is a, like a septum it is like a septum okay so that's a warmer which is only single in number okay so and now we are uh, going to the palatine bone as i told you 
if you look at the right and the left side of the palate bone if you look at the so this is a hard part and this is soft part so if you see from the inner aspect of the mouth okay so what of this is a hard palate and this is a soft palate okay this soft palate is formed by the palate bone the soft palate is formed by the palate bone and you know in the respiratory area this uh, tonsil okay so yeah this this is the palatine tonsils okay this is a palatine tonsils and you see this is a palate bone this is a palate bone this is a palate bone and this is a palatine tonsils okay i'll show you it's a small lymphatic gland this is a palatine tonsils okay this is a palatine tonsils so whenever there is any infection this tonsils gets enlarged okay but the palate bone is present in the upper part this is a palate bone this is a palate bone and palatine tonsil is present by the side of the uh, mouth okay so what you see here is this is the soft palate that is extending posterior to the roof of the mouth that is extending posterior to the roof of the mouth okay okay so i will remove this palate bone okay good so fine so now we have completed all the facial bones we have completed all the facial bones 14 facial bones and the right side facial bones i didn't remove just for your understanding okay so by this we are completing the cranial bones and the facial bones